our scene picks up once more following the Toreador Primogen. Uh, perhaps a half hour after his meeting with Seneschal Rodianus. Enough time that he has returned to his own domain and from there has sought to refuel himself, as it were. While it is true that he told the good gentleman that he had already drank. The truth was it was merely enough to keep him moving as it were. So first he will stop by downtown into the One-Eyed Dog bookstore and look for one of his herd. And we shall do the roll. Appearance subterfuge is seven dice. Difficulty six minus one for the dot and herd, so no, I'm sorry, herd increases my dice pool, so one extra die, eight die for the herd, and domain background reduced DC by one. So difficulty five, eight dice. And since each die is uh, generally meant to spend, to represent an hour spent feeding, we will say that uh, Jacob took his time. He sat about, waited, uh, he might have even gone so far as to mingle with those present before he cornered and drew in one of those who is known to him. As he feasted upon them, having no need to hide his true nature, but by the same token not wanting to utterly horrify those he moved upon, he would shrink from them upstairs, subjecting them to his horrific bite. Yet through their knowledge of him, through the bond that he had created with them over time, he was still safe enough in this act that there was no concern that some horrific breach may come about because of his actions. And taking two dots of blood from each, just the amount to leave them woozy out of it for a few hours, but not needing medical attention, that will top off Jacob after the needs of the evening and taking care of his minions, as it were, would be dealt with. <clears throat> Thus armed and rejuvenated, he fixes his shirt. He doesn't need a mirror. He just buttons it as he heads out the door. He gives a flick to his collar. And once he's done working up his appearance, well, once more, take to his bike, go from downtown into the projects. And here, he will, well, he'll park the bike not in the projects as it is a good deal of a valuable artifact and not one to be 
trusted in such an area. Instead, he will leave it in at the edges of the park. A place well patrolled and examined both by kind and kindred forces of observation. Once he has taken to the group and started to wander through the crowds, Jacob attempts to pull some information from those about. Armed with the knowledge that has been provided to him, unfortunately, by the Seneschal rather than his own harpy, a matter he intends to deal with swiftly as well, Jacob takes to that name that he's heard bantied about here and there, the Anarch Javier. Of course, he doesn't describe Javier Rojas in such a fashion to those normals he inquires through. But somehow, through the description and perhaps a little whisper here and there about some of the events he may have partaken in, he manages to find out that today, or yesterday, the rumors are a little unclear, but it's pretty certain that Javier should be, or frequents, a particular place. <laughs> well, you get um, information about this, I guess, on the ground uh, bar club thing called the Red Herring. Thank you. And naturally, Jacob asks for directions. He gets them with oh, just about. Let's see. In fact, I might as well. Seeing as how we're rolling dice anyway. Nope. No botch, but no success in getting directions from the person. So, he sighs and resigns himself to wandering his way to the Red Herring. He will pick out his cell phone and contact Juan Carlos, informing him that he'd like to meet him at the Red Herring. And seeing as how Jacob has need to find a place himself, if Javier knows about it, he'll get there before his primogen does. And we are Zamir Javier. It's you. Yeah, oh, okay. It's I you. Javier will, was... Javier will do his um, after we meet. Oh, cool, cool. Um, sorry about that, OOC. Anyway, uh, Juan picks up the phone. Uh, you can hear him, um, uh, the music and stuff of the cabaret in the background as he, after the last scene, uh, quickly went back uh, to take out his somewhat frustrations and... Uh, find a note uh, from, I guess, one of the harpies or someone that posted this on the uh, wall for any kindred to read, um, taking it down and uh, feeding upon uh, Calliope's herd, one of the beautiful, beautiful men, and uh, making him pretty much uh, not as beautiful, uh, angry. Yeah. Uh, what would that be? It was charisma plus expression probably difficulty? You said six for that because it's not my domain. It's just uh, her herd that she lets me feed from. Uh, for the um, for what they call the lustful feeding, it is appearance subterfuge. Okay, cool. 
Great subterfuge. So only four. All right. So let's see. Oh yeah. He is more than willing. <laughs> <laughs> He's so uh, willing, in fact, that a couple of the others are jealous. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I've never had that many good successes. So, But I only take two um, as to not uh, make him faint or anything. Um, um, then Juan uh, uh, gets the phone call in, in, in general uh, after he's done. And again, you hear the music and stuff in the background. Uh, hello, Senor Crawley. Hello, uh, Juan Carlos. Do you know yes. about the red herring in the projects? No, but I must speak with you. I, I've heard some terrible news. Well, I'm on my way there now. So why don't you come meet me? We find our way there. Okay, por supuesto. Where are you now? I am... Uh, he described the uh, eastern side of the projects. He's making his way towards the center. Fifth and Avenue. Got it. <laughs> there you go. He, uh, hangs up and um, he's he sound rushed and uh, hangs up and immediately heads towards there. He'll arrive in about five minutes, ten minutes. Uh, once you have a one to one, Carlos has arrived. Uh, Jacob greets him. Uh, he has finally managed to find the red herring through several bits of walking and uh, contacting him to update him on his proper location. Uh, so Jacob has made his way in. And uh, I'll leave it to Javier to describe what they see there. Well, in front of the business you can see a small, small steel door with a small red herring over it. With a, uh, all in neon, and as I said, the text red herring. And you, when you walk in, you will see a few drunks in the corner, a rather busty bartender in a tank top uh, on the, behind the bar counter. And I'm just going to make a roll. Yeah, that's all successes. Uh huh. Uh, I'm cool. I am not. Uh, that was a feeling roll, hunting roll for me as well. Uh, okay. And you can see when you're looking around, you can see well. Juan would recognize Javier sitting with uh, a couple of people in a, one of the what do you call it, stalls uh, within the bar. There's some loud music playing, and they're shouting it rather loudly about music mainly and he kind of sees Juan and waves him over and as I said does not recognize Jacob in any way but sees the handsome man anyway squinting and maybe even throwing him a wink of the eye. Juan uh, leads his primogen to Rojas and uh you're at a table, correct, or at the bar? Yeah, yeah. You're, uh, he's at a stall uh, with a table, and as you approach, he kind of talks with the guys and girls in the stall and makes them leave. Kind of, they make a disappointing no noise as they leave, but they leave you alone nevertheless. And as the two of you walk up, Javier gives the clear signal to have a seat, right? next to him or in front of him. Juan sits down right next to him and uh, waits for his primogen to seat before he's seated. Uh, Jacob comes in. Uh, he sits on the same side. He sits off to Javier's left. Plops himself down and gets comfortable, just kind of melts into it the way a cat does when they found a particularly comfortable piece of furniture. Waves his hand to uh, let Juan Carlos have a seat as well. And as he does, uh, you notice that Juan looks very agitated and very uh, not himself as he 
looks uh, looks at you very seriously, very seriously, and puts pulls out a piece of paper and sl- and like put slides it um, in front of you. Guess esto. What is this? Uh, how you shows you the treaty that was drafted. Uh, Javier will, as he's wearing a suit this time, for whatever reason, he kind of likes the suits nowadays, but he pulls back on his shoulders. Anyone normally wearing suits would see that it's rather uncomfortable, but pulls back on the shoulders and un- loosens a button on his suit and takes the paper and kind of reads it through. And At it will take point. a great deal of time. Oh. Just one quick second. Uh, yep. I need to double check something because Jacob is about to do something, and I want to make sure that I got. As this he right. reads that out of character, Steve, if you wanna come in just by following me, because I left the cabaret in a hurry, so you probably were thinking, "Who the fuck is that guy?" Because I I don't think any any four of us have met you. Oh yeah, I see. Um. Okay. The um. The uh, paperwork out of character was put up at the uh, The Elysium. So uh, Juan Carlos brought it here. Yes. So let me make this roll. (sighs) Jacob is going to burn a bout of blood for celerity. Damn. <laughs> no good. Yeah, uh, you will feel or you'll feel a brief rustle of air. You won't have seen it. But Jacob tried to snatch the paper before Juan Carlos handed it to him. Oh. <laughs> um I'll, th- I'll think that it's just my cold breeze flaw that was working up on me or something. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I totally forgot that you have a cold breeze. People yeah. are starting to shiver within the bar. Most definitely. Like some Take guy. <laughs> some guy is going like, hey, who turned on, down the AC? Jacob will be, will just uh, look to Juan Carlos and the paperwork, say, uh, I believe he was handing that to me over to Javier. Javier kind of looks up from the paper, obviously dumbfolded by all the difficult words, and kind of shrugs and just gives it to you. Jacob folds it up, gives Juan Carlos one of those looks that that just disappears pointed, annoyed look as he stuffs it inside one of his pockets. But he doesn't say anything. He uh, <coughs> gets it as he's received uh, one, it, one of them once before when uh, the card trick failed. And, uh, <laughs> he understands and just like kind of sits back and relaxes a bit. It tries to uh, as he again is a bit agitated but um, just lets his primogen speak and uh, uh, to Javier, as he just listens and stays silent for a bit. I don't believe we've met before. But I've heard your name about here and there. And it's Crowley. Jacob Crowley. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. You're that uh, primogen fellow, yeah? He extends his hand and uh, gives you a firm grip. Jacob takes the hand, shakes it briefly, like someone who doesn't like shaking hands. Or just, you know, maybe someone who doesn't like you. You can take from it what you will. And I hear you have been around for a little while. Uh, Right. I don't know, maybe six months, half a year, I don't know. Time flies so fucking fast, Joe. Yes, indeed. I'm surprised I've never had the chance to meet you. 
What do you keep to this uh, wonderful establishment all your time? Nah, nah, this is just, just like, I like to spend my, you know, past time around here, uh, going up with the Sheikahs, getting some groove on, or the Sheikos, if you like that, I don't know, I kind of like them both, <laughs> and smiles at you. Now, uh, nah, I'm just, I'm just a customer here, I don't own the fucking joint or anything. Hmm. Well then. <sighs> well, s since I saw you here, I thought we'd say hello before um, my associates and I went about our business here. At this point, the door would open and in would step Mr. Joshua Smith. Looking a bit disheveled, uh, he had been spending a good deal of his previous nights trying to catch up on everything in the past hundred years. This is a very important meeting to him, so the nervousness is not uh, hidden at all on his face. He steps in very quietly, very coyly, and looks around and finally makes eye contact with uh, one Jacob Crowley. Uh, once he meets his eyes, Jacob will look over. He will give you a slow eyeing over, but your countenance was described to him by one Mortimer Fitzgerald. So rather than seeming perplexed, Jacob will simply smile across to him and uh, wave over to the seat, kind of crowding Javier in with all of these other Camarillo Tori more. <laughs> and as uh, I f believe Javier might see uh, Joshua, and he would kind of smile widely and almost kind of jump out of his seat and go, Hey, Yoshi, get the fuck over here. We've been waiting for you. Or, I don't know, I don't know. What, what is this, a fucking intervention or something like that? No, never mind. Get, the, you, get your ass over here, yo. Joshua will smile widely at Javier and sit next to him. And he is trying a little bit more of his modern vernacular. Oh, hell no. What's up, dog? <laughs> hey! Hey, yo, Galito, you got the fucking lingo down. And he kind of goes in for a fist bump. Joshua doesn't know what this is, so he just simply reaches out to shake his fist. Uh, no, 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 you go like this, and he takes your fists and, you know, does the movements. Ah, well, thank you very much, Mr. Javier. Uh, Juan looks at Javier and uh, kind of looks back at Joshua and then back at Javier and be like, Otro anarchista? No, no, he's not an anarchist, Joe. Oh, oh and, no. Uh, stands up to greet Joshua and gives him a firm handshake if he accepts. Oh, Joshua does quite warmly. He gives a nice firm handshake, two good pumps. Hola, mi nombre es Juan Carlos. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Carlos. Uh, I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. No, not yet. He sits back down and uh, quietly sits down as he still feels a bit of pressure from <laughs> Crowley. Oh, at this point, Crowley is smiling and congenial, friendly, back to his usual charismatic self. Mr. Smith, if I'm not mistaken, I was told to expect you at some point. Glad to see you. Oh, why, yes, sir, Mr. Crowley. Uh, no offense, but you're quite a hard person to get a hold of sometimes. I know. It's a bad habit of mine. I tend to be a bit of a recluse. I do try to keep my ears out, so when I did hear you would be coming through, I did my best to stick around. Well, one with uh, such good visage as yourself shouldn't keep it hidden. <laughs> why, thank you. 
But the good visage is only worth so much. One still has to work on the other aspects of our lives. I suppose there's some wisdom in that, Mr. Crowley. Why don't you take a seat where well, you've already taken a seat? Tell us a bit about yourself. What brings you to our humble city? Well, uh, suppose I'll give you the, uh, oh, how do they say it, the skinny of it. Uh, so I was fighting, well, long story short. Uh, when I was a mortal, I was born in Denver, Colorado. Uh, the Great War, uh, which I now know is known as World War I to you, broke out. And I did my bit for the country. I signed up. Uh, I was trained at Boston with the 85th Rifles, and I was sent out to fight uh, alongside the French at Verdun. Uh, terrible mess, that. Uh, got injured by some German gas, and I was shot a couple of times. Uh, ended up in a field hospital uh, where I would read my stories and my poems to the other soldiers to help keep up morale and spirits and that sort of thing. And Well, that's when I got the attention of my sire. Uh, she was volunteering, you could say, at the hospital. And uh, she embraced me, well, a few nights after that, saying that uh, uh, talents such as mine shouldn't perish from this earth. So I uh, spent the next two years serving in France, uh, trying to do my best for the court there. When I was taking shelter in an old cottage house, uh, a farmhouse, when suddenly a two two pounder shell, uh, shell from the Germans came over, uh, I was badly injured, and I've laid in torpor for the past ninety eight years. Uh, I was uncovered by a couple of uh, construction workers, um, and. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I, I lost a little control of myself. Uh, those two men are now deceased. But uh, evidently what I had done had caused a ripple with the Prince of Verdun. He wasn't much too happy with me. Uh, he wanted me destroyed originally, but uh, the Primogen there spoke up in my defense, and instead I had been uh, exiled here to the States. Uh, which now I find myself in your fair city, which I have to admit is quite interesting. We do try to keep things a little bit active around here. Not too much, but, you know, just enough to keep things moving along. I'm sorry to hear that you are a persona non grata in that section of the world, but perhaps you will be able to make your home and find some use here. Was it... Your talent in storytelling. Ah, that's, that's correct. Lovely. I uh, uh, was actually uh, talking to the prince, and I believe that I might be able to uh, assist our clan and uh, maybe earn us a little prestige of the city. No, you don't say. And what sort of assistance might a storyteller behold our prince? Oh. Well, as you should know, Mr. Crowley, words are quite powerful. But uh, Very true. I, I was going to help Mr. Mortimer with uh, the... He kind of looks over at Javier, not sure how much he can speak, with a matter. Jacob nods and smiles. Ah. Him. Yes, I'm certain that he will make great use of your talents. Well, thank you very much. Gracias por tu servicio. Thank you for your service to our country. Joshua I gives an awkward... I don't know if you should really thank me for that, uh, Mr. Carlos. Uh, this whole thing was... Uh, uh, it was a whole bit of madness then. Um, I'm hoping that perhaps I live at more civilized times. <laughs> With current standings, probably not. I see mum mumbles under under his breath. Well, there are um, us, of course, those who uphold the mask, and of course there are others in the city. 
And he will look over to Javier. <laughs> but so far, things have kept in accordance to the Convention of Thorns, to the best of my knowledge. I haven't heard of any recent attacks on Camarilla by Anarchs. Jacob is just watching Javier to see if there's any reaction to that at all. Nah, not really. Juan is pissed. Juan <laughs> <Fun> is bad. <laughs> Joshua, being mostly ignorant of this, is going to turn over to Javier and look at him a little bit. Why all this uh, anarch foolishness, Javier? I think you would do quite well in the camera. Nah, you see, Yoshi, I was kind of born into being a, what do you call him, a fucking anarch. Can't really live in L.A. and kind of get away from all that shit. Born and bred, so to say. Stuck, nailed, and fucking glued and welded to the promise of being an anarch, yo. Well, I can't say as I really understand it, Mr. Javier. Uh, you know, to each their own, but... Uh, uh, to quote uh, the uh, Mr. Snoop Dogg, uh, fuck them other niggas. I'm down for my niggas. I believe. Hey, you. fucking aid, man. <laughs> and he gives you another fist bump. Joshua now returns it. I believe that you would be best served uh, with the Camarilla, uh, with your own kind. Ah, we got fucking Toyota within the fucking annex, you know? Who the fuck do you think you've sided me? But are any of them in this city? Ah, nah, nah, nah. We only got, like, Malkavians, fucking Gangwell and Bruja within the Anarchs in this city. It's, uh... Nah, don't... Don't take offense, y'all, but... Uh, some Toy Rolls can get kind of fucking... I'm a nurse. Really? You don't appreciate a good bit of art? A bit of creative prose or a admiration of a latest masterpiece? Oh, no, no. Mr. What, what do you want me to call you? Crowley? Or Jacob? Or Mr. Crowley? Or the Highness Mr. Crowley? Or what do you want me to call you? Highness, come now. I'm not the prince. Oh, yeah. So, Mr. Crowley, no, I, I enjoy fucking art, yo. I even do some art myself. Well, not art. I do the, like, the singing and the music and, like, the swinging and the rocking and the popping and whatever you fucking call them these days. Uh, basically, I play in a band and I do some music and I get some fucking youngster fucking gangbangers to do their shit, yo. A band? I heard about a band passing through before. What was the name of yours? Uh, I, uh, I've been in the city for a few few months now, and we've been playing some other places in, Miss, well, what do you call it, Massa, Massachusetts. But it's called Imbondable Masses. You don't say... And if anyone wants to roll perception on that, you can see there is a distinct chill to Jacob at that point. I will continue to play Javier blissfully unaware. <laughs> oh, well. Wow. Success is bro. I will, what you notice is that at the mention of unbondable masses, Jacob is going to, well, his silence takes on a completely different level. It goes from simply listening and chatting along to being openly discordant and most certainly malcontent. Either he doesn't like their music or there have been things things that have happened around that name that he doesn't too much care for. Fortunately, everyone sitting at the table is a bit too young to know about them, except perhaps Mr. Anarch. He's playing dumb. <laughs> uh, 
he doesn't really care. He's not one. He's he during this time when most people would notice Jacob Crowley being a well, bit tad bit mad, disappointed, aggravated at. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, at Javier or the band Unbuddable Masses, Javier is blatantly explaining how their how much fans they got on Facebook and how many records they recently sold. And anyone just slightly listening to it would hear that it's actually going quite well for Javier and this band. But uh, putting his head to his his hands to his head and like uh, so angry. Oh yes, that reminds me. Juan Carlos, I heard the <clears throat> Elysium that our clan hosted was a glorious success. Did you get to perform? He looks up at Primogen and uh, see, uh, although uh, Senora Tavalaris, Senorita Tavalaris, uh, stole the show. She has a tendency to do that. Still, so long as it went well. We should try to have another one sometime soon. Perhaps. Uh, at a different location, just to spice things up. Yes, I'd like to take our minds off uh, other things as he's looking towards uh, where you pocketed <laughs> the note, kind of insinuating, like, uh, let's talk about it. <laughs> He so. doesn't bring it up. He just leaves them there at the red herring, kind of chatting with Javier, kind of talking over him, listening for the most part, but almost just getting an eyeful of him while they have the little impromptu meeting in the projects. Javier is going on about uh, now, uh, now more or less how the current situation in the city is, and he's actually talking about this treaty somewhat loosely, and anyone who could get some, well, make a perceptual empathy roll maybe, would see that it's actually kind of iffy to the whole ideal. Perception empathy. Somebody wants to walk me in and roll for me. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you would. Uh, uh, we're in the bar in the project. You can just walk in. <clears throat> you can. Um, you could have also messaged Jacob. He would have definitely told you where they were and how to get there. Yeah, she'll come in still in like you know, dance attire, like, obviously, just, like, left rehearsal real quick and looks like needs to run back to rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, how many, do you know your dice, Chantel? Or... Six. Six, gotcha. I can roll that. Oh, okay, you can go ahead. Uh, that's three tenths and a nine. Oh. You should roll for me all the time. Seriously. <laughs> Four successes for her, one success for Jacob. Three successes for Juan. So basically anyone who made uh, successes on that role would feel like Javier is kind of iffy to the whole thing. And to Galpi just coming in, it's just, it's the treaty. It's the treaty that's the problem. What about the treaty? Uh, you don't really, you can't really put the finger on it, but it's something to do with the treaty. Not that there is conversation between the Anarchs and the Camarillo or something like that. Once he brings it up, though, Jacob is going to take the opportunity to 
would pounce on it and just turn to him and say, you don't like the treaty? No, uh, I don't. And he kind of stops for a minute and unties his tie and puts hey. it on the table. Hey. Take, takes a Takes it like David's finger stands for a moment. Uh, <laughs> I don't dislike, but I don't like the tre like the treaty and stuff like that. Uh, it's just I uh, I I feel like we had stuff to like fix this before? What, what, like, what was the problem in the first place? Why was there a new treaty? Oh, I don't know. Can I tell you what the problem was in the first place? As she sits over ah. the other side and says, here's, what, here's the problem it was in New Serum for the past year and a half. It's been tit for tat, one side, other side, over asinine bullshit. And you know how kindred are. They don't forgive. They don't forget. And unfortunately, that's not working in our favor as a city anymore. This is a pretty oh. darn good deal for the Anarchs. They don't quite get exact representation at the table, but you know what? Otherwise, if they wanted it, they'd be Camarilla. So it's a damn good deal. I think it works in favor of both parties. It'll help fuck over the Giovanni. And you know what? Gary's not a bad man. When he puts his mind to something... He has heart. I think if we can work together for the defense of the city, I don't see how that doesn't benefit both parties, but people are going to have to be willing to forgive things that have gone on in the past with our predecessors. Otherwise, it just grudges can't hold if this is going to work. Uh, Javier begins to nod with you. and uh, Actually, yeah, says, yeah, yeah, I... I kind of agree. Gary's a cool guy. I like Gary. He might be somewhat funkish sometimes, but he's cool. He's cool in all fucking respects. And when he gets like down, when it gets down to fucking, it's you know he kind of keeps his promises and is a general cool guy. And that coming from like, I believe. That being said, right. there's a lot of bad blood, and she looks over at Avia, between you and what went on with that other chick, that's going to have to get resolved, too, if this is going to work. I don't know what went on yeah. there. I don't necessarily need to know, but that that poop needs to get cleared out of the room. You know that Megan sh girl? Yeah, yeah, we cool, we cool. Um, Me yeah. we cool. You also... And this is what I've heard as Juan kind of like just shakes his head at what Calliope is, sh is saying. But uh, I also heard you and Gary attack the Primogen. This is 100% not what you guys deserve. <laughs> and Javier makes the, makes the face, you know, that would be like... Milk's pure pouring out of Javier's nose at this point, and <laughs> like uh, he is totally taken by surprise and, uh, of this, and kind of goes <coughs> as he's not even having anything to drink, but he would spit beer, ale, spirits, or tequila, whatever would be on his side if he was mortal. No, no shit, no, I attack no fucking body, and not with fucking Gary. All right, real quick. As he asked you that question and you reacted, uh, I spent a willpower point to use telepathy. What is your willpower currently? That is a eight. All right, I have two successes. So, Jacob, just dug in your mind about that to see if you're telling the truth. Uh, you would see, like, a lot of images... Uh, uh, and you know, get emotions and stuff like that, and it's made most, most like confusion. Like he's he's searching his memory for this moment, but there is no moment in where Gary and uh, uh, Javier jumps, Primogen, uh, as least as he knows it. 
Ah, all that wasted willpower. <laughs> <laughs> Javier, oh, as he yes. snaps snaps him back into uh, uh, from his confusion. What is, is this true? What I hear? Umbra, no, <laughs> no, it's not. Who the fuck told you this? Some bitch be fucking lying his fucking cocko ass off. The Tremere are usually. Not the best of liars. As he oh, kind of like yes, eyes they you. Are. They are oh, they good liars. They are deceptive, and I will let you know that you missed the time when they fucked our whole clan over. Never again. And she looks over at Jacob and says, Jacob, I trust your decision on this one. If you need me to stand in for you, I'll represent whatever you wish. <sighs> I'll actually be there this time. It's one of those I will not be too busy. But I will definitely keep your desires in mind, Chantel. A calliope. <laughs> and she uh, grabs her dance bag and uh, goes to uh, nod to everyone else and uh, dips back out. But see who she got. Have your screens. And everyone gets to watch the appearance five vampire walk out the door. <laughs> Javier stares at some kind of thing for a second too long and kind of shakes his head as Calliope leaves and steps back to the conversation at hand. Uh, Juan looks a bit confused at being corrected and uh, looks at Jacob and what does she mean? Uh, fuck Dark Clan. Oh, uh, let's just say that a while ago... Oh, a couple of their clan decided to uh, see how far they could push their luck. And they got found out. <laughs> Shit. The Tremere has been all, all around the fucking city causing fucking troubles as of late. Like using fucking blood disciplines on Elysium, uh, lying to my face, cursing me, uh, and going back on fucking treaties we made. You attack. You uh, did you just say a Tremere? You deserved everything that happened to you. Did he say using blood disciplines in Elysium? Yeah, uh, yeah. Basically, like the Tremere has a thing for like going around <laughs> crashing my shows. And one time we had a show at the Opera, which is in Elysium, and suddenly, boom, lights off. Everything goes off. It's just technical failures all over the place, which has happened like five times already or something like that. And it's always when the Tremere shows up. Joshua at this moment will just be smiling very coyly, and he'll have a notepad and pencil out just scribbling wildly. fuck is going on? And uh, the Tremere has also, uh, you know about like hitting one of the Tremere's, yeah, I got, I got fucking fooled by another fucking Toyota, or fuck that puta, but to, into like... Uh, get, another like, Toyodor attacked you? No, 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 this or the other Toyodor kind of played on my, me being fucking angry at the time and made me attack another, well, you know, Tremere. Mostly like telling, yeah, that guy is the guy who killed that guy or something like that. Who is this Toreador? What do you call him? Something French, something. Uh... French, is this the same person that attacked Miss Brothers? Yeah, 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 like that puta, yeah. Oh my uh, man. Things are starting to string together. Yeah, basically like, I showed that guy who was boss after that, but... I, I kind of took him out for a ride and dumped him somewhere outside of the city and made him walk back into the city. That was all I did, but that guy went to, like, fucking hell and back to try to make my life miserable, spreading lies about me and all that shit, worsening the situation with the Tremere. Anyway, I made a deal with, like, the Primogen, or is he the Seneschal now? I don't know. Well, what is it called? Malcolm Brody, fuck his name, Innes. I don't remember. Yeah. 
Anyway, so I made a deal with him, and they, all of them to me went back on that deal, like the minute they made it. Basically, it was a deal to like say we don't the Anarchs don't fuck with the Tremere, the Tremere don't fuck with the Anarchs, and then they start fucking with us like fucking hell. They blood cursed me. I could only eat like ash for an entire week. That's. You had to literally eat ash, or the blood tasted like ash. No, 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 no. You know. Uh, I basically lived off my ghoul's fucking cigarettes ash for an entire week. <laughs> uh, that's a, that's a <sighs> response, but... Uh. So, the we are assholes. So basically, we, done, we did shit all, and they go around like they own the place. So, yeah. So who attacked the primogen of your... Juan looks a lot calmer now, by the way. He, like, trying to piece things together in his head of all these... Who's lying, who's not lying, who's... All this stuff, and it's kind of... It's giving him a headache, but he, he wants to hear your side. He, he's he's pretty complacent. And Javier can... Hey, Juan Carlos, who's the, uh, who's the primogen he attacked? Which one was it? Uh, he looks like Carly. Uh, Miss, uh, Miss Senora Lucas la atacaron outside of uh, someone's Elysium. And now Javier begins to nod. Oh, yeah, 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 that shit, that shit. Uh, no, nah, no, nah, that was, she provoked us, pulled a knife on us, and kind of threatened to kill us, kill us so, yeah. He's going to use his Auspex uh, aura, I believe, right? To uh, see if you're... No, okay, that's enough die. See if you're uh, lying. Cause... Should I use manipulation, empathy, or manipulation subterfuge when I'm trying to discern if you're telling the truth on that one? No, I'm sorry, uh, it's perception. Either from my Manipulation, uh, empathy, yeah, manipulation. Perception subterfuge can be used according to the rules in the book, anyway. Yeah, it's either so, one. So, since it's my highest step, uh, perception, empathy, since, you know. Yep. Sure. Okay, checking uh, your aura. I only got one success, so I only know you're a vampire, so I failed no. at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, one. It's all right. You can go ahead. Uh, you can see the main shade with one success, can't you? Yeah. You can see what yeah, the, sh the shade is pale, though I think, yeah. right? One success. Ah, uh, yeah. You can see, you can yeah. see right. it's a vampire, basically, yeah. or living. Uh, and for Jacob Crowley, uh, he would see Javier's not is not making any obvious signs of lying, uh, actually. So. Well, Virginia is not the most tactful of people, but. Usually, he just leans in and just starts trying to uh, put in the more congenial atmosphere between them since the tension seems to have evaporated. Usually when she threatens someone, she at least feels slighted or annoyed by them. Did you all come into her bar and insult the food or something? No, no, no. The thing she was angry about was that... Uh, she got done fucking disrespected to Gary Walsh, and she was like, "Oh no, I cannot go up to Gary Walsh because that guy's gonna fucking slaughter me like fucking what do you call it, making like salami out of me or something like that." And then came she came to me and said like, "You're gonna fight me if you're standing with Gary Walsh," and I said, "No, I'm not gonna fight you." And then she started calling us mean words and pulled a knife me on me. And they decided not to fucking leave, and then we kind of got, got angry and said you should back the, back the fuck off. And after like five, ten minutes of her just taunting us, like the bruja with me just finally fucking snapped. Oh, what bruja? Uh, what do you call him, Nick? Ah, uh, the forno. Yeah, yeah, but basically he just gave her a light tap, tap on the head and... Uh, I wrestled him, wrestled him to the ground, and 
much apology was given to Stitches later and st stuff like that. I even gave him some fucking advice to how to wake her up. Well, this isn't... This isn't at all what I've heard from the Tremere. Because the Tremere are filthy fucking liars! Did you just say she had a knife in her hands? Yeah. Did you wave it around like she really meant to use it? Or was she just brandishing it like an asshole? No, no, she's, she kind of made a wave at me as I tried to approach and try to calm her down. <sighs> Jacob is going to turn and look at Juan Carlos. Traditions. Yes. She did not respect hospitality. I... I don't know why, but I apologize for not trusting you and going a wire, Javier. Hey, regardless, hey, hey. Though, regardless, though, this treaty cannot happen, and I hope you know that. Joshua was actually going to look up from his pen and paper, and why do you feel this way, Mr. Juan Carlos? Uh, looks back at it. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um. oh, who brought the kid in with him? <laughs> to eat. <sighs> no. Jacob rubs his head like he's annoyed by the sound. <laughs> and you can see, like, back behind the bar. Oh, by the bar, there's some young girl with a kid who's screaming, and she's trying to pick up some guy. Uh, I'm gonna am you guys. I'm gonna roll self control real quick. Because <laughs> this is my derangement. I fail. I immediately stand up and walk over to the <laughs> child screaming at the woman. And I ask them politely to please leave. This is no place for a child. She should think about her life choices. Um. <laughs> And of course, this being the project, somebody else going to make a uh, chance roll. And of course not. She's negative to this. She gives you the whole, I can do whatever I want speech. You can't tell me what to do. Ain't your baby. <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't your life. This... <laughs> you get here. Oh, no, you do. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'm going to go ahead and spend the blood for all then, and I'm going to try to convince her. Uh, da, da, da. Is charisma and... Is it performance? Yeah, performance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, charisma performance. All right. And, oh, man, this is piss poor. Uh, just one. So it only lasts for a turn, but... Uh, uh, it takes one person, let's say. No, 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 it's not how long it lasts. It'll still stay, but it only affects one person, and the person yeah. of lowest willpower presence. Her! Uh, uh, let's say her. <laughs> and she kind of looks to you and say, Oh, no, you ain't worth my fucking trouble anyway. I'm out of here. And she takes the kid and leaves. Uh. <sighs> hmm. I remember why I don't eat in this area too often. Javier is fucking laughing his balls off right now. Foolish <laughs> kind as he mumbles that and sits back down. Uh, and looks back at Joshua. <laughs> finally answer, <laughs> answer him. Um, you see, uh, much like Javier here, I am also from the West Coast. And he can tell you, as I can tell you, that such a treaty would weaken the Camarilla quite extensively to a point where it looks like we have a Baron on the seat. Uh, Anarchs oh. tend to stray and be within their own cities that we allow them to have. And they are quite content. And and in a Camarilla city, they, they don't need things such as domain. They don't need things 
as uh, he remembers back to the paper, um, the magistrate, or any such luxuries. Ah, uh, yeah, fucking magistrate. Yeah, that kind of shit is also all kind of fucking whack. You know, the thing is, if we wanted the barony, why not fucking call it barony? Uh, I, I, you know, I just want somewhere to kind of put my fucking feet up and, like, can get, like, status perfectus rolling and not be fucking per called down on every time I walk out of my fucking door because recently that has been happening and the Tremere are fucking lying about us as fucking usual and shit like that, but not... Uh, I like and I dislike the treaty. I find that... What would you call it? Well, Jeremy McNeil said it's called Libertas, and we're born with it, and we give up this Libertas with this treaty, and I don't know if I like it. Uh, you know, you could always just join the Camarilla if you want a place to put up your feet. Most kindred are allowed domain if they earn it. And every kindred has a haven, after all. Oh, no. Uh, I wanted liberty, not oppression. Any kind of smiles. No, no, you're fucking with you, but... Um, uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm not too keen on joining the camera. I'd rather go independent and just do my own thing. Shit, that would be actually kind of cool. Just, like, go... What do you call them? Uh, loners, or... What do you call them? In biker gangs. Chapterless mm -hmm. people. This is, I don't know uh, like that route. This is a uh, very strange talk uh, as he tries to find the right words um, trying to translate in his head. Um, independence is another issue entirely separate from the Anarchs, where at, at, at least uh, he kind of rolls his eyes. Uh, the Anarchs are Camarilla, whether they think so or not, they are adherents to the masquerade in every way. But the problem with independence are much like uh, stories of Rafnos, and um, I do not know much of the Giovanni, but uh, I know they are mafiosos. Uh, whatever you might hear of them, they, they do not adhere to us, and that is an issue entirely. Nah, but you know, basically I like the convention of force thing, where you, it was like... Okay, you can be an anarch, you can like sympathize with them, you can do whatever, just follow the masquerade and we're cool. And, like, don't go around fucking killing people. Yes, but, we're not so uh, But, uh, with like the prince going on saying that you can suck, you can suck off, and we're, we're not really gonna follow the conventional forms, or if we are, we're gonna follow my version of it and not the official Camarilla version of that, like the Inner Circle made or whatever. So, I don't fucking know. I'm, I, just, I'm, just, I'm just afraid that I'm going to add up like Pody or what is his name, Joey, and or another guys within the Camarilla so recently that just got fucking whacked because of no fucking reason. Well, Pody, uh, yeah, maybe, but, you know. Uh, well, and, uh, Stands uh well not stands up but like kind of strains up and says body uh, was a plague bear he died because he was a fucking idiot oh well you know I I heard about this like Sabbath thing where they kind of string up bodies like I heard they did in the Elysium so just kind of thinking to myself that was kind of fucking unneeded what it was in the can you just do it behind closed door like a fucking humane person? Fortunately, our prince is new and a show of 
cohesion and power is in order, it is not uncommon for La Camarilla to show its uh, strength. You do not just up and destroy, uh, so to say, um, our supply. No, no, no. I don't. I don't say that. We had fucking plague bears in like LA too, and we did it the same thing. It's all jailer style. You can't do it in another way. But the thing about stringing up the body, cutting his fucking limbs off, and showing it as a public execution—that's just fucking weird and fucking gross. And that's coming from me. And I don't dislike people who does that thing, you know, we one to each own, but, you know, doing it in front of people like some fucking type of sick, what do you call them, Sabbath toyed or art exhibit, that's just fucking weird. That's, uh, he, he looks a bit agitated at you, and this is not Sabbath, this is... It just clearly shows how young you are, Javier. Is there has been much worse than this? What's Javier, you're thinking about this like a human. That's your problem. You're going about this whole thing like you're kind. And the kind have had their own mass executions that have been far from pleasant to look upon. Concentration camps come to mind. No, the whole thing here, Javier, is this one decided that they wanted to continue spreading about a lethal plague, a disease amongst those that we seek to nourish ourselves from. And instead of coming forwards with it, he continued to do so. He needed to be punished. It needed to be shown. And it needed to be shown so that the others of the Camarilla knew that their prince would deal with these matters. It's not about a display. It's not about enjoying it. If we enjoyed it, then yes, we would very much be like the Sabbat. It is the repugnance of it that will uh, keep it from happening again. Well, I went, I went fucking there, but uh, you know, I heard like the rumors of like people applauding and going like fucking ape shit over this, so I don't know. But, you know, you guys were there, I was not. I'll let it go. Now, either way, that guy needed to be put down, and it's not like I'm going around saying that Plague Bears is the fire-based fucking idea since, like, toasted fucking bread. <sighs> I, uh... He looks to Joshua as uh, he's been listening and writing down, I, I would think. Uh, you are recently risen, as it were. Do uh, you have any opinions, uh, young Rose? Joshua actually kind of smirks, looking up from his pad. Well, I don't know how young you can really call me, but uh, uh, to be honest, from what I've seen in the French courts, uh, Occasionally, when they had to deal with things such as this, they had a, a panage for showing excessive brutality to make the point get across, but also to show uh, an emotional distance, a, uh, uh, a bit of a, oh, how shall you say it in French, a uh, je ne sais quoi, of uh, um, aloofness to the whole matter. And... If what uh, Mr. Javier is saying with uh, cheers and applause for this spectacle, uh, I think that was just quite uncouth. Um, I, I don't disagree that it had to be done, from what I've been able to gather, but uh, to show any sort of delight or, well, any emotion at all, I think that's a, a breach in court etiquette. Interesting. Uh, I'll have you know that it was me that actually did the execution, and I was delighted in serving the Camarilla the way I did. 
No, I have uh, no arguments with uh, you enjoying your work, but uh, enjoying a thing and showing it are two entirely different things. I mean, after all, we live under a masquerade, and uh, there's also another masquerade we put on for the others of our own kind, isn't there not? True, true. Very well said. No. Basically, like, I wouldn't care too much if you pulled that guy out there, limbs still intact, staked, and killed him on the spot. That's just showing a thing, but just cutting the limbs off and stuff like that. It went just a tad bit too far for my fucking taste. And, you know, it's not like I fucking enjoy killing people as a pastime. It's not like I'm out hunting fucking kind or fucking kindred for that matter for fucking sports and fun and shits and giggles. Again, That's we're not uh, sabbat. We don't do that. I, uh, I hope you don't take it. Uh, just like I told Senor Stitches, who seem to think that I did it out of just enjoyment of killing a Nosferatu, which is not the case at all. And uh, I did not enjoy the fact that I was killing another kindred. I was enjoying the fact that I killed the Camarilla to protect it, to protect the masquerade. Yeah. But uh, about, about the treaty, anyway... Oh, I yes. think I think we anarchs we deserve something something. And the projects no one fucking gives a shit about the projects anymore now really does do they. Is anyone here any kind of points at each one of you interested in doing anything within the projects? Joshua actually focuses it up. Um I have a bit of a hobby. Uh, I like to rescue struggling musicians and artists and uh, uh, help nurture their careers. Uh, just a, a bit of a side project. Um, and I happen to find those uh, more easily in the projects. I mean, starving artists don't just uh, appear in Uptown. I had an investment in a... Well, what would you call it? Um, a community center was for the youths there. It was unfortunately never completed. Hmm. And I enjoy your McDonald's down the street just watching the kind eat their burgers. So, as it seems to look, we all enjoy the projects. Senor Rojas. Um, <laughs> Javier's just gonna look at Juan and just go, Que? My bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Do you pick up your Happy Meals from the McDonald's as well, Juan Carlos, as they're exiting out the door? Uh, yes, I enjoy uh, the toys. Es tu uno idiota? No me diga si, mierda. No me diga si, as he points to you. He has, uh, yes. Yes. Okay, whatever. But basically, besides Juan Carlos, Feliz, this bother, the fucking happy sports here, uh, fucking really interest in my fucking McDonald's down the fucking street. And jo Joseph, you can find people here, and I don't really mind your people coming here. But basically, I have a lot of business here. Actual stuff going on, actual people I need to meet, actual people I need to protect. I even got, like, because I did this thing and ca killed, like, Buddhist space monks, kindred. Yeah, it's a fucking long story. But I basically have to look after some kids around there, or else we're gonna have a, like, motherfucking Ravnos pulling fucking scorpions on people again. It's a weird fucking story. A ravenous in the city, what? Yeah. Ravenous aren't that bad. Josh was actually getting a good eyebrow at Mr. Crowley. Uh, evidently, you and I have different uh, uh, definitions of bad. Well, 
They can certainly be horrific monsters as part of Rise of Independence, and we don't deal with them much. But they can also be very useful. And I suppose it's better than Osama. <laughs> Let me roll self-control for that one. Oh, success. Sorry, no outburst. <laughs> No, no, the shadows are kind of cool. Well, there's this guy, what's his name? Apollo, yeah, that guy's running around. Nice guy. Not actually really scary at all. <laughs> really? Wait a He's minute, you me. know who Apollo is? Yeah, shit, I met him, like, twice. Where twice. is he? I don't, know. I don't know. Oh, oh, I can, I can sell you some information. I might know someone who knows where he is. You might know someone who knows where he is. That doesn't sound like a sale. That sounds like a cheap ripoff. Either you know or you don't. Well, you know, I don't see any boons coming at at me, so give me some boons to boost my an Anarchare of boons. Ah, uh, no. This is a masquerade reaching... Individual, we need to know where he is. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, so basically, you guys owe me big time. <clears throat> and uh, I, I think, what was it? Last time I heard of his appearance was through George, and uh, that was as he was in the opera house talking to our old favorites. Proprietor of the Opera House, what is her name? Is that Chica Blanca uh, Ari? So I had a small talk to her as I was looking for the fellow at the time and was investigating the asylum who was no one was investigating. And she, as, at least according to George and some hints I got from her, she might have some conversations with him from time to time. This is Jacob just listening very intently to see if you're just making this up out of your ass as you go along. This is actually truth. I'm going to try and spend another blood on this fucking... <laughs> just to see if you're lying. Oh, God, I got three successes. Oh, that's two successes, actually. Two? two? I thought it was difficult to yeah, seven. difficult eight. eight? Oh, okay. uh, was you using all? All is difficulty, so eight and seven. No, I'm using uh, Ospe uh, Aura Reading. Oh, Aura Reading. Then you have difficulty 8, two successes. Yeah. Two successes. Uh, I only he, get one color. Uh, Javier, Javier is being, uh, he's being smug about it, as you, and you can kind of get that feeling that, you know, it's something like, I know something you don't know, motherfuckers, anarchs in the house. Ugh. Josh will simply go back to scribbling on his notepad. This whole Apollo thing is something outside of his uh, area of knowledge. So he has no. no investment in this. But I met the guy also in his scary as shit. Uh, handsome looking fucking fellow. Though. Can't say anything fucking less. Oh, really? Handsome, you say. And uh, Jacob is just going to let his voice trail on, putting the whole entreating, enchanting aspect of his vocals to work. Would this handsome fellow be someone you've run into more than once? Certainly someone you've talked to maybe face-to-face -face a couple of times, certain places? No. This handsome fellow that is Apollo fucking Creed Corinth of fucking, I don't know, Greek something something. Uh, basically, I met him, I think, twice. At least once. And, that, and uh, the first time, well, I'm kind of sad to fucking say this, uh, we kind of sold him a shit ton of guns. We didn't know he was kindred back then, though. <laughs> Well, I suppose at least you're making good business off of him. 
What about the other time? He's, he's scratching his head. I don't know. And this is me actually not knowing off game. I think I met him the second time. I'm not sure. That's okay. You can play it off however you want. <laughs> uh, he has shrugs, actually, you know. I don't know. It was It's all fucking easy. I, well, you can see, like, the concern. Uh, like, he's not actually sure. But he was at the, like, asylum. And he did do stuff there. And there was this Francis Chess guy who was also, like, who hunted the guy. And, yeah, so much fucking information. I'm fucking wondering why people don't fucking ask me stuff. Now, basically, like, this Francis Chess guy is, like, some guy who stalked and kind of reputated the killings that Apollo did, uh, the Black Rose Killer. Uh, and Francis Chess is a Malkavian. He was turned and brought to the asylum, and then he freed himself, and then we caught him. And... Uh, well, we did bring him to the prince. And I don't really know what happened after that, but I heard the asylum is a fucking pile of rubble as, as of now, but shit. Yeah, something like that. At this uh, mention of a copycat killer, Josh was actually going to turn to Javier and very quietly, you know, the others probably could hear him, but it was definitely not meant for general conversation of a, well, you should talk about this more after this meeting, Mr. Javier. I could have use for uh, information like this. Yeah, yeah, sure. But anyway, basically, shit has been going on in the city. We Anarchs have done a lot of shit. We even killed some Sabaf fucking monstrosity back when. And we killed some Sabaf and captured Francis Chess, investigated the asylum, shit like that. On the tail of, uh, like, the fucking La Sombra guy. So I think we deserve somewhere to put our fucking feet up. At least the projects. Because this place is fucking, uh, and he kind of looks around, squints his eyes, as in question himself, the dope. You would deserve it if you caught this Apollo instead of dealing with guns with him. Oh, well, you know... When a guy comes up to you and you have already booked a meeting and stuff like that and you don't know that fucker is kindred and he says, hey, I want to buy guns and you go and go like, hey, okay, sure, and then you find out he's a kindred and you go, oh, fuck, I'm going to kill the motherfucker and you try to do that and you don't find him for a fucking while. Well, that's another thing. No, of course, that's what I mean. Uh... <sighs> So basically, I've been hard on this guy's trail, but I'm just getting... I've, I've been trying at least some, somewhat to find him at some points, but, uh, you know, not getting all that information. Uh, who was that person you mentioned before the easy old twist? Uh, Francis? Ah, uh, no, the other one before that. Every, You know, uh, Blanca Gengarochika. Oh, Ariadne. Ah, huh, well done. Josh was actually going to interject here and look uh, to Jacob. Uh, my primogen, uh, I would like to bring up a son of mine. Uh, Do go on. The Triador threw a party, uh, the last one that I was at. Uh, Miss Ariadne uh, appeared and came in. I noticed that her eyes were glowing red. And uh, because the other kindred made no real uh, comments about it, uh, I felt that since I was new in the city, it wasn't my place to say. But now I'd like to share that it was uh, quite a concern of mine. I mean, not only is that uh, masquerade preaching, but uh, on top of that, uh, isn't that normally a sign that uh, something might have gone quite uh, wrong with her? Hmm. Glowing red, you say? Yes, sir. Uh, she was wearing 
sunglasses at night. Uh, but even then, I mean, glowing eyes uh, is something that's quite noticeable. Hmm. At least the Nosferatu have the uh, decency to cover up their visage before coming to court. Uh, but for her to walk around the city like that, it uh, didn't sit well with me. Fascinating. Well, thank you for your concern. And you, uh, Javier. Thanks for the chat. Yeah. It was nice well, rem to find you. Remember now you got some good information and don't go around fucking my ass for this. Oh, no. If I were going to fuck your ass, it would be over something completely different. Oh, yeah. So, I'm not going to get you, you take boons from you or anything, but you just remember next time I done, done something rather stupid, I do fucking help you guys out sometimes. And as long as you do, we'll have a reason to come by. And you might even... Learn a thing or two. You don't know what an older Kendrick can teach somebody. Yeah. But. Just a quick thing to say is. I think, yeah, I'm actually going soon too. I got some bad fucking presents to get to, so yeah. But the Tremere might be talking shit about the Treaty right now, and I think. Who is the one to fucking go against our prince right now and say, as I heard, the prince is kind of looking to say this treaty is a good thing. But the Tremere going against his back just to get back at the Anarchs, uh, you know, that makes me kind of iffy. Out of character, where's that tie that he took off earlier? It's in his pocket. Ah, uh, in his pocket. He is sitting next to Jacob, isn't he? Oh, uh, yeah, something like that, yeah. Hmm. You're gonna steal my tie? That's a low ball move, man. <laughs> you just got that tie, man. Um. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. One, uh, one uh, response no. to you saying that. This, while the Tremere may have uh, other intentions, but this uh, don't don't be fooled that this treaty will hurt the Camarilla and shall should not be passed. Uh, we shall keep uh, this convention of thorns, obviously. And uh, if people need to be re reassessed on it, then so be it. But a new treaty over something that's been generations. Obviously, this is this is not what's going to happen. So do not get your hopes up, Javier. Uh, you know, I don't care so much if. The treaty is actually followed as said. I don't give a fuck. But as the treaty is followed right as, as of now, the treaty is not fucking being followed, and we are actually further warred against, which would mean we could do whatever we fucking wanted after breaking the masquerade. But I'm just going to let this slide. Uh, I think the treaty might be a good thing. Maybe, I don't know. I think that if we go through this treaty, I'm going to stand on your guys' side to fight whatever the Sabbath or whatever fucking thing shows out us to destroy the city. If the treaty is not adhered to, I might just sit on the sidelines and knowing, and he points to one, knowing how good you are in a fight and you knowing how good I am in a fight, I would like to fight with you. And not just watch you fight. Because watching is fucking boring. 
I would like to remind you, Phoenix, you are of the Rose, so if our clan is threatened, I do not think that you will be in the sidelines. At least I think better of you than that. He smiles. So we should be on the same front, I agree. Joshua, so that's... Go ahead. Uh, so that's what I like with the treaty. I like unity, solidarity, and all of that shit that can bring us as we don't have it right now. And a lot of fucking anarchs are getting pissed. Me included, Gary included. We're not really happy. And we might just sit on the sidelines next thing that happens. I am happy that apparently this uh, Tremere that you attacked and the Primogen that was attacked, I guess the situation was coiled and treated. I thought it wasn't. I was under the, under the interpretation that it was let go, in which case Gary would have been blood hunted, 100% guaranteed. Oh, no, you see, the Tremere has... I haven't done anything to the Tremere recently. They're the guys who go about aggravating me. So, yeah. It seems that it was a tit for tat. Um, no. Although, is, yours, is your issue that Calliope brought up with uh, some woman, is that, is that uh, something we need to worry about? <laughs> He kind of smirks and actually produces a letter from his jacket pockets and just gives it to Crowley first. And it's basically, if you have not seen it, it's basically a letter from Megan Maitland that says, we're, ca we're cool, let's not uh, war anymore, and here's a nice new golden trinket for you to wear. Megan, the uh, Malkavian harpy. Yep. Okay, Jacob will read it since he knows her name. He'll recognize it and uh, look at Javier. He passes it over to Juan Carlos. Uh, she even gave you a gift. Yeah, I have it at home. It was cross and. It was not in my taste. I usually, if I wear a cross, it's when I go to church, and I haven't been to church in a long time. Shit, I need to go to the Sunday Mass. <sighs> yeah. Go, gotta go get some confession going. And kind of confess smart. too much. Ah, oh, no, I'm not doing that. But, ah, oh, no, my mom, my mother, she would be pissed if she knew I wasn't going to church as of recently. And it shuffles. I suppose that's a concern. Joshua casually looks over at uh, Javier really desperately wants to know what the look on that priest's face must be like. But Javier kind of leans up from the table. Stretches and you know, stands up in the seat and just jumps over to the next booth. And stretches one more time and walks out. And as he does so, he he waves and says, ah, but, you know, I got band practice to go to. You guys have a nice time. Oh, yeah, and he kind of goes forward and kind of snatches the leather away from Juan Carlos. Maybe I said he was reading it, but and he gives it. You know, I'm sorry, but I gotta take this, and he pockets it once more, and he begins to leave. You said he hopped over the booth. Yeah. Ah. As I thought, you we were. Uh, he was in the middle, or he wouldn't. Get, he wouldn't to uh, ask the dear. Primogen to stand up for him, so he has to help yuck the booth. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, and he, be as I said, he begins to leave and waves to you as he walks out and gives you some kisses, blows some kisses to you and says, 
Well, Feliz Navidad. Jo Yanni, Joseph, Joshua, whatever. See you around. I'll catch and you later. And of course, and he gives this big bow. Mr. Crowley, it was a pleasure meeting you, and I look forward to meeting you again. And as he strips, totally strips his voice of that normal L.A. Hispanic slang and dialect that he usually has. <laughs> and he leaves. Adios. As uh, he looks back to his primogen and the new um, Rose in town. I think he's an idiot. He is quite so, but I'm more interested in why I was lied to by the Tremere or left out information. And I'm also more interested in what they did to our clan in the past. Oh, that. Well, let's just say one of theirs got their hands on something that is precious to all kindred, and leave it at that. Josh was actually going to look over to Juan Carlos. And, uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend, but uh, to be surprised that uh, the Tremere weren't completely honest with you. Uh, don't, again, no offense needed, or meant, but uh, it seems a little bit naive that Tremere are known for their secrets. Uh, yes, they hold plenty of secrets, but they are forthright in Camarilla affairs, and they, um, again, as I told Javier, they may have underlying uh, things that they want to get accomplished. Uh, but one thing is for certain, when the Camarilla is being attacked, they are, um, as us, the forefront of the fight. So, uh, my me being naive uh, and thinking he was being honest about this attack on the Camarilla, I hope you can uh, forgive it then. I uh, was enraged. Uh, at this prospect, as you can well understand. Josh will politely nod. And, uh, I meant uh, nothing of the sort. I'm just saying that uh, while a Tremere has the Camarilla's best interests in mind, uh, they might not exactly lie. They may just uh, oh, hold back certain truths. Yes, well, I gave too much credit to him. Kind of looks up at you and uh, uh, thank you for your forgiveness. Then. Was it their harpy, Smith, who told you? You know too well, Senor Crawley. Is he uh, kind of like, that was a bit to your knowledge. <laughs> well then, I suppose it would be a good time for me to have a talk with our harpy. Where is Mortimer? How How is it that he didn't tell us about this? I had to find out on the posting of a wall and from a harpy of the Tremere. Well, to be fair, it was a new posting. I don't believe it was there the previous night, but well, such is as it is. That's the something Tremere else. Said that to this get been, the Tremere said that this is being made for quite a few nights. Yes. That's what they say. And I imagine nothing goes up on that wall with this much detail that hasn't been worked over for some bit. We'll find out uh, why he's been kept out of the loop. I should have contacted... Yeah, I, think, I still think the rumor should have made its way before the document was finished. Yes, it should have. A major weakness. One that cannot go unanswered. Well, Mr. Crowley, uh, forgive me uh, asking, but uh, the prince with this uh, treaty that everyone's talking about lately, um, they're going to bring it before the uh, primogen of the city to ratify, correct? Of course. Okay, that's only well and good. 
And uh, I'm also wondering, why would uh, this prince, not that I'm questioning his wisdom, uh, give so much to the Onyx? Uh, I could never see this happening in Europe. Uh, uh, the Anarx know their place, and they maintain, you know, uh, proper etiquette. Uh, and I, again, I don't want to step out of line. It's just uh, I see certain, how do I say this diplomatically, uh, certain lack of... Long-term... In the city? There's a lack of stability, I should say. One could say that. This has been a tumultuous time for Sarum. It has been for some time. As a matter of fact, these past years have, I think, been more... Well, more active for the kindred here than centuries in our fellow lands across the great ocean. But I don't know why the prince would or would not sign such a matter. It is being brought to our attention, hopefully, so that we can perform notice on it. And I imagine it will not leave those walls without some form of edit. But uh, be that as it may, it was posted on the walls of the Elysium. Don't go spraying it around too much. Mum's the word, sir. Mum's the word. The council meets in two days' time. We'll deal with it then. You can be sure of it. Um, one more thing, uh, Mr. Crowley. Um, this is a very light-hearted manner, and, but uh, I was uh, talking around the city. And I'm starting to gather that uh, once in the city we had a Malkavian prince. Is that truly a thing? Yes, we did have one. We called him the Mad King, Abraham Wolf. Well, the Mad Prince, but... It fit. Uh, forgive me, but uh, I don't believe I've heard that happening oh, much ever in the history of our kind. Miss Sarum is an interesting city. <laughs> well, I suppose in America... I not have heard about quite so many elder deaths. That's another troubling thing for me, sir. Uh, I'm mm, a bit of an old soldier. I like a chain of command, and I know who I need, like knowing who I need to talk to. Uh, in these modern nights, I'm starting to wonder if there isn't a, a bit of a fluctuation going on in the Camarilla that I find distressing. Uh, some institutions that I thought were stone are seeing less stable in recent nights. Um, perhaps I'm just an old curmudgeon in that way, but uh, uh, it seems that uh, the Camarilla have, uh, uh, at least in this city, a, a bit of a, what do the mortals call it, a high turnover rate. Well, you're not mistaken. They do. We have a bit of sabbat, a tiny bit of overzealous elders, and here and there, a lupine. And with that last bit, Jacob just smiles, watching Joshua's reaction. Ah, uh, Garu, uh, eh? Um, well, that's uh, mighty distressing. Uh, <laughs> well, um, I was wondering, uh, with your current position, sir. Um, may I be completely frank and honest with uh, my fellow Rose? Certainly. I prefer it. He looks to Juan Carlos. And, um, when I told you about uh, my past, sir, um, 
I did omit something, um, something that I'm not sure I want to share in front of Javier just yet. Um, well, understood. Upon my awakening, um, the two mortal construction workers that I killed, uh, I've done some digging on that. It appears that uh, the reason the Prince of Verdun wanted me destroyed was because the Ventru whip uh, it was her last remaining mortal offspring and uh, she felt that just uh, when I was exiled here to America I believe that uh, uh, she felt like there had been uh, an abortion of justice and uh, I'm starting to believe that uh, she's sending agents to keep an eye on me and uh, I just want to let you know in case uh, you happen to have a new venture in the city in these coming nights that uh, any sort of transgression against her was completely unintentional completely unintentional of course you were lost to Ryan's hunger indeed and I'll be quite honest uh, I woke up in a quite different time, and uh, these construction workers, I had no idea that they had any connections with any kindred in the city, let alone the whip of the Ventru. Oh, naturally. You've been a slumber for quite some time. Mm -hmm. I believe you. You need not worry about that. And if it seems that some odd occurrence is taking place that may jeopardize your safe living here, I will be sure to take it to task. After all, I cannot have the prestige of mine threatened. It threatens the standing of my clan. Nor can I abide by people attempting to punish or destroy my fellow Toreador. We are few enough in the city as is. Thank you, my primogen. Uh, Joshua, I do apologize if you took offense when I called you young earlier. Uh, I thought the hope war lasted longer than what oh. you seem to know. Go ahead. Uh, it, it's a, a bit of a issue I'm starting to deal with, but uh, I, I meant no offense. Uh, I I am in a bit of a odd situation. I'm uh, practically a fledgling in these modern nights, even though I'm a century old. <laughs> it's a uh, an interesting predicament to find myself in. Yes. Uh... I've heard of uh, stories on the west of others waking as he kind of drifts off and uh, kind of shakes off and uh, yes and he he bows a bit to you um, you are my elder after all hey Josh will smile and say well and these modern nights uh, I'm going to go with your more learned experience <laughs> you have experience on me sir uh, not too much, I'm afraid. <laughs> At least on the technology front. Uh, I am uh, actually uh, too old. Uh, I remember when uh, was it tape, tape decks and such were the latest fashion. Uh, I don't, I don't like these new cell phones too much. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Josh was going to have a completely blank expression when you're talking about tape decks and cell phones. <laughs> Of course, sir. <laughs> he uh, smiles and laughs uh, as he obviously notices that you don't know what that is either. He's like, oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> the last uh, cutting-edge technology that I knew was the radio by Mr. Marconi and the telegraph. So the fact that uh, the acquired amount of human knowledge can be held in someone's pocket is still like magic to me. Mm. Let's not talk too much about magic. It reminds me of our current hassles. <laughs> uh, Senor Crowley, so 
And uh, I'm sorry if I zoned out a bit before. Oh, it's no matter. The question is, what is your, if I can ask, what is your stance, Riley? Do you think you know already what you will do, or? Oh, I have no plan of supporting this ridiculous traitor. Well, thank you. It's a joke. And quite honestly, there's far too much, far too much in it that I dislike. These, these terms and these stipulations, this... He used to be as a, a sheriff among the Anarchs, but our prince is to treat with him should one of his Anarchs act in a way that requires punishment. No, no, I think not. He's either a baron or he's not. This magistrate position is nothing more than a fallacy. That being said, if it is the Tremere who are supporting it, it has such a strong fashion, it bears further ponderance just to see how much of a well, what is the term? How much of a bone to pick with the Anarchs the Tremere have? Is this merely spite or is it something beyond? And if it is indeed something beyond, it would be best to know what. I am most assured that you will find out just that as he smiles at you. <laughs> I intend to have a nice chat with Mr. Smith and Fitzgerald. We'll see what comes of it. Um, excuse me for interrupting, but are the Giovanni really that much of a thorn in the side of this city if, that we are seriously considering this sort of terms with the Anox? <laughs> uh, this, this treaty is not going to help or Inge the Giovanni in any way. I do not know why Miss Tavalaris thinks that. If anything, it allows the Anarchs and Giovanni to be more uh, in friendship than anything, because what if Giovanni just asks permission of this new magistrate to go into their domain and set up shop and so on and so forth? It's, it's ridiculous as he kind of interrupts um, Imogen Crawley uh, kind of is angry at the thought of why Miss Tavalaris would assume that. Well, it seems she has her own opinions as to what may be beneficial for the allies in Camarilla. The Camarilla is currently of the stance that there will be no interaction with Giovanni of any sort, not even social. That's our current take on them in this city. A bit more extreme than most. But uh, well, they are sitting right over there on our doorstep. And we're trying to put this wonderful city of Camarilla power right in their own um, front yard, so to speak. Well, um, let me interject a little bit of... Uh wisdom that I've gathered over my years. I've That's seen fun. how political buffer zones, as we call them for the Great War, worked out when uh, Archduke Ferdinand was assassinated. Uh, I think I'm beginning to understand the thinking of the prince. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but if he intends to use the Anarchs as a buffer against the Giovanni, a way to separate uh, their clutches from interests that we have. Uh, I fear that uh, the Giovanni might use this as a, a leverage against us. Um, but perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps, the, I mean, I'm going to assume the Prince knows much that we do not. Uh, perhaps we are thinking incorrectly that the Anarchs are more in league with the Giovanni than ourselves. If Indeed, the Anarchs in the city are more aligned with our cause. Perhaps we'll be all right, but uh, it, it concerns me that uh, we are reverting to an old treaty system that launched the kind world into one of its most destructive wars. Well, again, there's always the Convention of Thorns. 
it is in place, has been in place, and will remain in place. This additional matter. Well, let's just say I see problems with it. I think for the time being, we'd best simply go on about just leaving this to be. Let's see what the Primogen have to say on the matter. I'm certain that they are having their own chats with their own clans, much like this one. And many powerful opinions will come forwards when I speak to my associates. But, well, I don't suppose either of you have any connections with the uh, the street, the kindred whispers and rumors. Joshua actually smiles and says, "Actually, sir, I'm attempting to get myself into a position as a hound for the city. I feel it's." probably the best way that I could help serve my clan and begin to gather knowledge on the comings and goings in this city. I definitely have a, what are the kind call it, uh, information gap that I need to fill. But uh, I can definitely keep you up to breast on all the goings on in the streets, if that is what you're looking for. Uh, no, quite the opposite. I want the streets to know about this little odd point where the, it seems the Nosferatu Primogen would go about threatening the Anarchs. A little clash against the uh, stance of the Tremere that it was a uh, Assault by the Anarchs. But I don't want anyone to know that a Toreador had anything to say about it. Hmm. I understand entirely. I suppose there's spiders all over this city that might uh, want to overhear something like that. Spiders and bats. And I want none of them to have any idea. And Jacob will rise up from his seat in the booth, signaling that any matter of meeting is adjourned. But, of course, he doesn't tell the others to rise. Instead, he just states, if you'll excuse me, I do have some other business matters I must deal with this evening. But I thank you both for your time. And, of course, Mr. Smith, it was a pleasure to meet you. Uh, do be sure to announce your presence to the prince if you have not already. And failing that, keep in mind you can always go to the seneschal. In fact, some might suggest you do that first. Oh, thank you for your wisdom, Mr. Crowley. Jacob will wave to Juan Carlos. Juan well, Carlos takes a deep bow. Hasta luego. Permission. Jacob nods. Farewell. Turns about and makes his way to the door. Juan uh, would stand um, and look at Joshua. I am also looking to become hound, uh, so this is great news. Uh, the Clan of the Rose is so active as he smiles at you. Oh, well, then I look forward to working with you, Mr. Carlos. Um, I have to admit, I'm not much of a fighter. I'm, I know my way around a rifle, but uh, uh, if things were to get uh, up close and personal, I believe I'm quite lacking. I hope uh, I can count on you in that sort of regard. Uh, of course. I uh, despise guns. Um, I have no idea how to make them go boom. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, though, I would definitely be at your side if uh, situations come to uh, fist to cuffs, as they say. Um, another thing, though, I told uh, Senor 
Uh, well, that I was to prove myself before I even attempted to ask uh, for such a position, uh, which led me to seek uh, Sin uh, Apollo. There we go, Apollo. Um, to try and bring him into uh, the prince and the sheriff and be through with such Sabbat sightings. If you wish to accompany me, uh, I will be making a visit to uh, this airy uh, that Javier spoke of. Joshua actually nods thoughtfully and goes, uh, Of course, anything I can do to help my fellow clan members, but... Uh, uh, I'm not entirely up to date on this, Mr. Apollo. From what I'm beginning to piece together, is this a suspect for what uh, I overheard uh, one Laird Brayhorn talking about, a uh, Black Rose killer? Uh, I believe so, but I'm not privy to anything that had to deal with the asylum. I stayed away, as I told everyone to stay away from such a... Uh, Blanket claim that a Methuselah was underneath. Not something that I think any of us need to deal with. Joshua's eyes actually widen as wide as saucers and he looks to Mr. Juan Carlos. Uh, I wasn't entirely um, knowledgeable that that was a Methuselah that they kept talking about with the uh, recent events. That. That's distressing. Is it uh, destroyed? Yes, I... Again, I don't know too much about it, but apparently it was um, an old, old one. Yeah. That would be something that you would take up with uh, Clan Malkavian and their primogen. Uh, I don't really like... Was... Uh... What? Oh, I... I... I tire for uh, the Malkavian and their riddles and voices. I, uh, it's too... Uh, a little too... Uh, oblique for my tastes. Uh, so you understand why I told them to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, the Black Rose Killer apparently was someone that Apollo met with, and that's all I know. Um, I do not know if it was uh, because this uh, Black Rose Killer was Sabat, or I, I, I do not know. Uh, but I intend to find out as he smiles uh, towards the door. Joshua will actually rise as well, and he goes, Well, uh, that's all very good. Um, I do hope that nothing gets entirely uh, out of hand. Unfortunately, uh, all of my monetary wealth is locked up at a bank in Denver for the time being, and uh, I have not been able to adequately arm myself or get uh, many of the necessities that uh, one in our situation may need. But uh, I do have a keen eye for investigations, so I suppose I would love to help you there. Uh, good. You are like me. All my things are locked up as well. <laughs> it's mighty distressing. Uh, Mr. Greyhorn uh, assured me that he would help me retrieve this money with, uh, of course, a cut for himself. But uh, once I have that, I, I do hope to be in a much better situation in the city. <laughs> Interesting. I'd be careful about uh, Senor Greyhorn as he tried to, uh, for what I... I understood, pin something on young Mortimer. So be careful in the dealings with that man. <laughs> oh, I think I understand, uh, Mr. Brehan. Lawyers are bloodsuckers, even if they aren't kindred. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> As uh, Juan is going to go ahead and start walking towards the door. Um, hasta luego. Uh, I'll keep in contact with you about uh, Senor Ad, Ari. Ah, thank you very much, Mr. Carlos. I hope to work with you very soon.
and both of them walk out of the red herring. Scene ends.